have I got a trick for you. Now that we've seen in the carbon NMR, it telling us how many types of carbons we have, there's a trick we can do with a carbon NMR. It's called a running a depth spectrum, D-E-P-T. And that allows us to see on every carbon atom, how many hydrogens are there. Is it a CH3 or a CH2 or a CH or a carbon with no hydrogens? That's going to be huge for us to figure out what our molecule is. Let's take a look. In that last video, we looked at this compound right here. There were five different carbon atoms in them, in this compound. One of the carbons, labeled C, is a carbonyl between 150 and 200. Two of them were double bonded carbons between 100 and 150. And two of them were regular carbons between 0 and 50. That's a regular carbon 13 NMR. That's what it looks like. Sometimes called the zero degree carbon NMR. Think about looking at it straight on. Now you can also run what's called the depth spectra. Depth, the D-E-P-T. It's a special kind of NMR, carbon NMR. We run it three more times. And in effect, we're looking at it at different angles and starting to look at our peripheral vision of the detector. And you see these peaks a little bit differently at these different angles. Sort of, that's what's going on. But that's good enough for our case today. What I want you to know is, for these different locations, they tell us something about the carbons that we saw in the regular carbon NMR. In this spectrum, the 45 degree one, which is usually at the bottom of these three, this one shows us all carbons with hydrogens on it. Every carbon that has a hydrogen. This one is only those with one hydrogen only on it. Only CHs, carbons with one hydrogen. In the 135 degree, a peak points up if it has a CH3 or a CH, an odd number of hydrogens, and it points down if it has a CH2. Okay, even, but only CH2s. Carbons with no hydrogens don't show up at any of these. So let's take a look at each of these spectra. Okay, now the bottom one. Only carbon atoms with hydrogen show up. So you end up getting a spectrum that looks like this. This one shows up, this one shows up, this one shows up, and this one shows up. So E shows up again, D shows up. So E, CH3, has hydrogens. D, CH2, has hydrogens. A, CH2 has hydrogens. B, CH has hydrogens. C, carbonyl with no hydrogens. It does not show up. Ah, so we're saying these have hydrogens, but this one does not. So this one, being out around 200, is probably a carbonyl, and it has no hydrogens on it. It's not an aldehyde. All right, so that tells us which carbons don't have hydrogens and which ones do. This one are only those with one hydrogen show up. So A with a CH2, it won't show up because that's two, not one. B with a CH, yes, it shows up. And all these are in the same location. Hopefully I can line them up. But that's a CH, it shows up. C, no hydrogens on it, it's not a CH, it does not show up. D, CH2, that's not a CH. There's too many hydrogens on it, it does not show up. E, CH3, it won't show up. So B is the only peak I see in this one. Ah, I know that B has one hydrogen on it and some other thing. Oh, and it's a double bond. It's in my double bond region. Okay. Now, sometimes, don't get fooled, that sometimes you might see a little tiny peak for some of these others, where it, if it was a strong peak originally, you can still see a little bit out of your peripheral vision, but not a lot. So it would be very strong, as big as it is always was, if you're going to see it. And since I don't see very much of it, don't worry about little tiny things out there. B would be the only thing I see here. Right now, this one. Again, my carbonyl doesn't show up in any of these because it doesn't have any hydrogens. B with a CH, it points up. A with a CH2, it actually points down below the spectrum. 
So that's a key indicator. If it points down below the spectrum, that's a CH2. C doesn't show up, no hydrogens. D, CH2, which way do you think? It points down below, that's right. And E, CH3, odd number of hydrogens, it points up. All right, so let's see what that tells me. A and D, ah, those are CH2s, easy. And this one's in the double bond region. It's got a double bond on it. And D is a CH2, but a regular kind of CH2, no double bond. How about E? So I know what each of these are, how many hydrogens are on them. E, here's how I would have interpreted that one. Let's see, it's got hydrogens on it. It's either an odd number of hydrogens because it points up, it's a CH or CH3, but it does not show up here where the CHs are. Ah, it must be a CH3. So we have a methyl for E. Now I know every carbon atom. I know how many hydrogens are on it. I know if it's a carbonyl, if it's a double bond or a regular one. Now I can go to the hydrogen NMR and make sure this methyl and this ethyl or this CH2 and CH3 are together by being a triplet quartet pattern. I can make sure these double bond ones are attached to each other, which of course we know they have to be. One's got a double bond. The other one's got a double bond. What else can it do but stick together right there like that? So I can start to piece together what's next to what and figure out what my compound looks like. That's what the depth tells me. So I can get a regular carbon NMR, see how many types of carbons I have. I can get a depth, which tells me how many hydrogens on each of those carbons. And then I can go to the hydrogen NMR and put the whole thing together. One of those, you just got to memorize the bottom one, the 45, all of them with hydrogens. Then just the CHs, then up CH or CH3 odd numbers or downs or CH2s. And if they get them mixed up, look for the one that might have some down ones in it. You remember those are CH2s and everything else will start to fall into place. Hey, I hope these videos are helpful for you. If it's helpful for you to learn this organic chemistry, watch another one of my videos and I hope uh, to see you in another video.